Hello everybody, I'm Vince Pitstick, your metabolic mentor, and I'm about to take you through a series of tests, a journey if you will, into understanding hormones and metabolism. And I'm gonna do it using the Dutch test as you see behind me. The Dutch test is revolutionizing the way that we can optimize metabolisms and get rid of everyday symptoms that you may be having from fatigue, swelling, sleeplessness, anxiety. So the beautiful thing is this test allows us to work on both understanding how they all connect and come together by looking at something I call your metabolic axis, meaning are all of your hormones in alignment for one, to get rid of symptoms and make you feel great, but two, get your metabolism working optimally. Understanding that your metabolism works when all the hormones in alignment, allowing your body when it's in a sugar burning state in a caloric surplus to when you eat less calories and work out, going down in calories, now you should go into a fat burning state. And the reason that doesn't happen or is happening has everything to do with your metabolic alignment or axis, and the Dutch test does that. So for example, many of you may be experiencing fatigue, having issues, your body doesn't look the same anymore, and then you run to the doctor and get some blood work and everything comes back kinda normal, right? You may not notice what's going on. So the Dutch test is the next step into actually looking deeper into your hormones because you have so many hormone and hormone metabolites. It's not just progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. That is so minimal. There's so many things going on inside the body and if you really wanna fix it functionally, this test is the solution. So this client here, and you know, for an anonymity purposes, we'll leave her name out of this, but this is your everyday woman working 40 hours a week, uh, lives a, somewhat of a stressful life, very busy, go, 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 and has been working out a lot, and her metabolism has relatively stopped working. And again, if you went and got regular blood work, you probably wouldn't see anything too crazy. But as we look in the Dutch test and we look further, we find so many things. Let me explain. This test is going to identify androgen deficiency in women. Women may not realize to look for this, but as they diet, they're beginning to lose muscle and they don't know why. So in this test, let me give you an example. Um, we'll call this uh, Mrs. Jones, okay? What you're looking at here is a Dutch test that gives you the basic hormones here. Let me drop this screen down so I can draw on this. So. Essentially, these dials here represent your hormone level, right? So if your dial's down here, your hormones are lower, right? And this is based on your relevant range for your population, right? Um, if your hormone's below the blue line, it means you're suboptimal, you're very low. Um, if you get above the star, you're over, you have too much. Now, that's not always true, but in this case, it absolutely is. These are your main heavy hitter hormones that everyone kind of knows about that they will check in blood work, right? Progesterone, estradiol, which is just one of your estrogens, and testosterone. So as you can see here, uh, her progesterone level is much lower than her estrogen. So that would be a little bit of E2 dominance. They call that estrogen dominance. So that's what you might pick up if you looked at normal blood work, but what you'd be missing and the key, the reason that she's not losing weight anymore, the reason she seems to be losing a lot of muscle and getting skinny fat and now her weight loss has stopped, has actually much more to do here. So with women, we don't tend to think about androgens and testosterone very much uh, because we tend to think these two hormones, right, are female hormones and we'll only look at these. While it's true, if we optimize these, so progesterone, we like to see somewhere around here, estrogen somewhere around here. Uh, testosterone's already pretty optimal. Um, you'd have a better ratio. Now, in general, if we're talking about a metabolic axis, we would actually like to see all of the hormones maybe in the same place, right? In balance, whether they're high or low, as long as they're in balance. But you can make the body look a little bit better if you lean the hormones in certain directions. And that's just experience I know over time that I'll dial back the estrogen just a little bit and the proge uh, progesterone up a little bit more. Um, so when we look at this, we would see estrogen dominance. We would not notice there's an androgen issue, which I will show you in a minute. Now, the way the Dutch test is different is that it actually adds up all the hormone metabolites. What does that mean? Well, it's metabolites that are released from your main hormones. That if you add up all the metabolites, these are free metabolites, by the way, active hormone. Many of the hormone tests that you get from your doctor are total, meaning it has bound plus active 
Bound is nothing that you can use. We want to look at only active hormone that is free to be used by the body because that's what you feel. And that's where blood work gets inadequate. You, for example, you do see that with testosterone, a free, right, and a total. But you don't see that very often with progesterone and estrogen. Here, these are the free hormones that are left available for the body to use. But it's measuring all the metabolites. And this becomes important as we continue down her test. Now, what we're looking at here is the more advanced page that will break down all the hormonal cascade and allow us to look deeper into your hormones. There's so many different hormonal patterns and behaviors, how you metabolize hormones, where do they go in the body? Because it's like a ladder. All of your hormones start from progesterone essentially or pregnenolone before that and then move their way down into estrogen. So where are they moving? It's kind of like Plinko and you're trying to figure out what the behavior of the system is to optimize it. So you're, you're looking at here, for example, let me, let me go over this. These, this is pregnenodile, okay? This is, both of these together are the metabolites of progesterone. So when you add both of these up, it represents the free amount of progesterone inside the body. All right, so again, we already went over that this, she's, she's stressed and she's burning her progesterone, okay? Um, we have identified that her testosterone is, is optimal, okay? But testosterone in women is not the key that usually builds muscle, actually. So ironically, in a standard blood work, this would miss the key hormone for the female for building muscle, which is androstenedione. And these here, ediocalanolone and androsterone, are the metabolites okay, of androstenedione. Now, this one right here, androsterone, is the key for women to build muscle primarily. Testosterone does help, okay, but if you have no androgens, and as you can see here, she has none. They are extremely low. This is androgen deficiency. If you are androgen deficient, you're not going to build muscle. And in fact, she's pretty much so low hormone across the board that when she trains to failure like she's doing with low caloric deficits, she's not recovering correctly, she's eating some of her muscle every time, and so when she loses weight, she loses too much muscle. We call that an ROE, rate of efficiency, okay? So if I lose one pound of muscle, how much of that was fat and how much was muscle? Right? Well, I think one thing to understand when we look at this is usually when you lose a pound, okay, 0.5 of it typically will be water. Now you've got another 0.2 and another 0.3 because the body always loses a little muscle if it's losing weight, you know, and then it should lose fat. But the ratio, which one of these, all it is down to 0.1, meaning that if you don't cut correctly, and you, bu you burn a 0.1 extra of muscle when you lose every pound, you've actually gone into a poor rate of efficiency. So you're losing more muscle than you are fat, and that will actually lead to huge metabolic slowdown in the future. That's not the kind of weight loss that we want. This is why everyone's metabolisms get ruined later. Because for every pound of muscle that you lose, you lose potentially 50 calories burned per hour of moderate activity. Think about what I just said. So you're raking the leaves, you're playing with the kids, you're cooking food, moderate activity. And if you lose that 50 calories every hour, think about how much that adds up to. So when you lose uh, an amount of muscle with every pound that is unfavorable to your body composition, every time you cut and lose weight, you're getting more skinny fat and then you'll gain more fat because of it. So a lot of women don't realize that your androgens are the key to your anabolic state and essentially making sure that you hold muscle and burn fat. So this lady was actually androgen deficient and she didn't know it because blood work was only looking at testosterone. I'm sure in blood work you'd pick up that she's estrogen dominant, right? Because you can see that her estrogen's higher than her progesterone. Okay, they could fix that with some hormones or, you know, Mediterranean dieting, whatever. But if you never picked up on this androgen deficiency, 
this is the big key for her. And you wouldn't have learned that unless you did a Dutch test. So again, that's one of the reasons that we have to do this so that we can identify the different metabolites. So let's go back up and, and ask ourselves, well, how did this begin? How did she become androgen deficient? Most likely it was stress over time. And part of it was probably a genetic component when they're that deficient. So that means from probably a very early age, she had low androgens. So in sports, whatever she was doing, and a lot of women, we see this all the time in Nutrition Dynamic, and we identify one of the key reasons that they now have a poor metabolism over years of dieting. So for example, this is free cortisol, okay? Free cortisol. Cortisol is the stress hormone that you feel as energy for the most part. And you'll notice that this is the range. Pe people's cortisol is supposed to kind of come up during the morning and then drop into the evening. And as you can see here in the red line, that's not happening. She's flatlined. We call that stage three adrenal fatigue. So acute stress, meaning like go to the gym or, you know, I, I don't know, getting excited at a football game actually raises your metabolism. But long-term chronic stress tires your adrenal glands and you go into insufficiency. And this matters because the adrenal glands make DHEA. So from the adrenal glands, you make two things. You make cortisol and you make DHEA, okay? You can see she's not making any cortisol and you can see that she is not making any DHEA. So again, this is another area where clinicians would make a mistake because if you have testosterone that's here and you're presenting with fatigue, you would probably think it's her estrogen progesterone ratio, but it's not. She's androgen depleted. She has no DHEA. DHEA then pours into androstenedione. This is why in menopause you still make androgens, women do, because it doesn't come from the ovaries which shut off. It's the adrenal glands. And then you see down here the trickle down effect. She's not making any androgens. All of that is gonna make you very tired. It's gonna make you feel weak in the gym. It's gonna get rid of your sex drive. And you're gonna be really confused as to why you're having these symptoms when your doctor presents you with the normal testosterone level. This is just one of many of the amazing details that we can discover by going through a Dutch test with you.